Hello everyone and welcome back to the Classy Cooking Channel. I'm your co-host Deneen and it's Christmas Eve day and Dawn is still on holiday break but you should check out the three course galette video that she put out this week. Uh, it's magnificent and I will link it in the description box below. So today we're going to do uh, my family's tradition for Christmas Eve. It's a lobster casserole. Oh, but we do have a special guest that I want to introduce first. His name is Mr. Claw, and he is an oven mitt puppet. Yay! Okay, so my aunt-in-law, Carol, and I were on vacation one time, and she said, Deneen, you should buy this claw. So I did. And, you know, it never was really great. Like, the claw just doesn't really work well, you know, taking, like, pans and cooking sheets out of the oven. But Mr. Claw always made a great trivet and now his debut I'm making lobster casserole 2023 uh, and I'm calling it 2023 because uh, this is the first year it's going to be out in the public. Our tradition is we have seafood uh, every Christmas Eve and lobster pie is among like the best treat on Christmas Eve. Um, so I'm going to show you the casserole that I put together today. Um, now I'm going to take it to my cousins and he's actually doing his own version. Today, my version is going to be a cream sauce, a buttery cream sauce, um, but there are going to be some differences. You know, um, my family and I, we're, we're not like very heavy, creamy people. Um, and, you know, in fact, Italian cooking in general if, in Italy um, does not have a lot of creamy kind of sauces. That's more of an Italian American thing. Um, but, uh, what I do here with, with the casserole is I do a cream sauce and I infuse it with some different flavors like fennel, saffron, uh, some thyme, and I try to make it so that um, the lobster isn't swimming in the sauce, but it just is coated enough um, to have that uh, really depth of flavor from the sauce come through and complement the sweet lobster. Um, so those are the goals, and I'm gonna be showing you how to prepare it like that. Besides, Mr. Claw loves to take it up a few notches. He gets all happy. All right, I'm going to get going on this in uh, just a minute, but just a couple of things first. Um, my neighbor, who is arguably one of the world's best neighbors, Carl, um, every year he gets his own personal lobster pie. Um, so he, he's going to be coming this afternoon to pick it up, and I want to make sure that I have it all ready for him. And um, second, uh, my good friend Val said to me one time, um, you know, Janine, I like your videos, love them, um, but could you do more talking? And I thought, oh, you know, yeah, I, I can switch it up. So I'm going to do something a little different today um, where I'm going to be explaining kind of like you know back in the the early days of this channel and um but i'm going to try to uh put some music into it too and i, I don't know what that's going to look like um you know the creative process mm. it's not linear it's all happening right now in here that's what uh, i have planned for you today 
and let's start cooking. Okay, so I'm a one woman show today. Um, production, I'm gonna have a couple camera angles. I'm gonna go over the ingredients with you. And let's see, what else? What else am I missing? Hopefully nothing. Okay, so I will show you the ingredients. Okay, we've got the um, two cups of heavy cream, half a stick of butter. This is curry gold butter. Um, now you can use any butter, but if you're gonna go through the trouble to make such a special dish like this, it is worth it to um, put in some grass-fed butter because what we're doing here is we're infusing all kinds of high quality ingredients and that's gonna lend to the final dish and it's gonna make a big difference. Okay, and we're going to um, infuse this cream with um, some sherry wine. Um, I'd normally put a half a cup in, but I discovered that uh, I didn't have that much left. So this is about a quarter cup. That'll do it. It it will still be great. Um, but I would go roughly with a half a cup. Um, we've got, I don't know, maybe six or so fennel seeds. Fennel. Um, that's going to give a nice little infusion flavor. All these flavors are gonna to blend together too. And we've got a pinch of saffron. See that? And I still have, my, my um, time is still alive. I um, went out in the back deck to get this time. And uh, it's cold here today in the Northeast, <laughs> um, but it's still alive. <laughs> We're putting it in for uh, that lemony flavor. It's got um, a great lemony kind of scent to it, and that's all gonna infuse together. Okay. Um, then of course, you know, we'll have salt and pepper, um, and that's basically it. Uh, oh, yeah, so this is um, one of the gifts I'm bringing to my cousin's house. It is an amaryllis. I've never seen one like this before. It's beautiful. The flowers will last probably about two weeks. And then it might not shoot up another stock for a couple of years or so, but it's a beautiful holiday plant. And so just wanted to point that out to you. Oh, and we've got um, a clove of garlic. I, I am going to include that in there with the butter, get that done first, and um, I will chop it here for you right now. Got a little trick here. Yeah, this is a fairly large clove. Um, so I just kind of smash it like that. And start the beginning mince. I'm not, I don't have the best polished knife skills, but it is good enough. And a little trick because it can be sticky. I'm going to put some um, Himalayan sea salt in with it because that will give me more control when I mince it up. I want, um, I don't want really any big pieces. I sort of want it to melt in with the, the butter. Um, so I'm gonna try and get these as small as I can. My other knife here. Now, um, the butter I bought was salted, and you know, you'll hear that, oh, if you use salted butter, you don't have to add salt. Um, not necessarily true. 
I add a little Himalayan sea salt. See, because manufacturers, you don't know how much salt they're putting in. Um, I would imagine it's all different. Um, so I always do like a, a pinch or so, even if I'm using salted butter. All right. That looks good. I'll show you here on the board. Okay. Gotta look like that. Now let this pan heat up and um, then we'll do the overhead view. Heated a little more than I thought. It's gonna brown a bit. I'm taking it off. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Doesn't brown too much. It's okay if it does a little. Camera, my phone camera doesn't like motion. It blurs a lot of my stuff, so eventually I have to figure out what's going on there and, and fix it. Okay. All right, we got a little brown there. All right. All good, all good. I turned that way down though, but I am going to turn it up to cook this garlic. that all incorporated there. We want the garlic to cook. We don't want it to be raw. So it's about a minute maybe. And um, what we'll do now is we'll stop that butter from processing further. And I just added the sherry. Let that cook off a bit. All right, so that's a couple minutes, and I am going to add the heavy cream. I will turn that. Up and um, so what I just did was I added a little water to kind of thin it out. Um, we want this decadent, but we want to manage the heaviness too because we don't want it too heavy. Now, I'm going to add my infusion ingredients, our fennel, our saffron, and our thyme. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting to the thickness that we want. Oh! My whisk is a little hot. Let me see if um, Mr. Claw can help me out. Let's see. Very good. Very good. All right. I think we are there. But what I like to do, um, because I did taste this, and... Um, that garlic is really coming through. This is the first year I put garlic in this. Um, and oh, it's delicious. Um, but I'm gonna just counteract it a little bit with just a tiny bit of nutmeg. Did you see that? Just a little bit of nutmeg there. Um, and that's gonna bring another depth of flavor to the whole entire sauce. Okay, it's going good. Now, um, I will show you. I am a wooden spoon girl. I'm a wooden spoon girl. Um, and I'll show you what this looks like. You can see that there. Just coating the back of the spoon. 
See that? That's nice. That's really nice. Okay. So I'm going to transfer the sauce, put that on simmer over on the stove there, just um, so it doesn't separate, and um, come back with the star of the show, the lobster. Okay. While I was chopping up the, the lobster, um, Mr. Claw reminded me that, you know, he should be the, the star of the show, Mr. Claw. Um, but, you know, I had a talk with him and he said that he's more than happy to uh, share the stage with our fresh lobster for our lobster pie. Um, thank you, Cherry Street Market. Um, I waited in line an hour for this lobster yesterday. And um, it was okay because uh, there were like a hundred people in this tent um, waiting to get in. And, um, you know, we got to know each other. We had a lot of laughs and we got a fresh seafood. Okay, so I am um, I'm going to put Carl's aside and then I'm going to do the main casserole when I come back and show you what that looks like with the sauce. Then we're going to do um, the breadcrumb cracker topping and we'll bake it up. We're ready to put our sauce on the casserole. I will show you just how to do that. We're not going to put a whole lot, but we're going to put enough so that it's all kind of coated. Just Try to get some good coverage all the way down. Now, I think that may be enough. See that? Nobody's really swimming. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of black pepper before I put the crumbs on because remember how much I love black pepper. So gave a little dusting of pepper there. I'm gonna put this in the fridge and we'll work on our cracker crumbs. Okay, now we're ready for the crumb. It's a combination of um, Ritz cracker. And when I was at the fish market yesterday, actually earlier in the week I went there and I got like a personal haddock kind of pie thing. And I loved their crumbs so much I'm using Cherry Street's crumbs. So it's kind of like a combo, Deneen and Cherry Street. And you, now that they have a lifelong customer, I would typically just use regular breadcrumb store-bought um, or crumbs that I season up myself, but I'm using Cherry Street with the Ritz today. So very, very easy. And um, we'll start with uh, the butter, melting of the butter. Got the hot plate on low this time. Okay, so... I'm doing like half a stick of butter. I'm not going too overboard with the butter. So we, we want a good buttery flavor right on the top of the casserole. So I got about half a stick here. And I will let this melt down gently. Okay. I've got my crumbs here that I'm going to put the top layer on and um, you can see here you just kind of like brush them on, spread them out maybe a little bit. I think I've got enough to cover this, this whole casserole here um, so I am going to try to work with it. Um, I will have to make a few more crumbs though for um, Kyle's pie and I also got another personal thing there going on. 
Um, just multitasking it all today. Yeah, this will work out great. What I like to do at the very end is um, hit it with some paprika because that will help it uh, bake nice and golden-y with some color. And I'm using a, a lower quality paprika because I don't want to use like a smoked, but you certainly could if, if that's what you like, go for it. Um, I just want to pull back on the paprika flavor. It'll lend um, just a hint. So that's why I've got this lower quality one and um, I'll just hit it with it. Okay, just sprinkle, get some good coverage, right? It practically looks baked right now, but it's not. Um, we will put it in a 375 degree oven for about 35 minutes. I'm going to cover it um, with foil so uh, it bubbles like for the first 20 25 minutes and then I'll take the cover off and just let it get a little browner on the top and that's all there is to it. I ate a little baby, a little baby casserole and I'm going to show that to you right now. Um, Mr. Claw is being a trivet right now. See? See that? Mr. Claw. Um, so I don't know if you could see, but it is still bubbling just a bit. And I wanted to, um, let's see here. Okay. Show you what that looks like. Right, so the lobster itself let out some moisture along with the sauce, and um, we can see that our crumbs are nice and goldeny. That nice sauce. So I am going to let this sit. I will plate this one um, so you can see that. And I will also um, have uh, a nice uh, view of the big casserole. I am back with uh, Mr. Claw for the final uh, taste. Now, Look at that, right? Oh, smells great too. So, um, okay, we got a claw up from Mr. Claw. Okay, well, let's see, let's see. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I taste notes of the fennel, the saffron, the thyme, a little bit of nutmeg. Oh. It's delicious. We did good, Mr. Claw. <laughs> I've got to stop eating. Because I'm going to be having a whole bunch of lobster tonight. It has been a pleasure doing this video um, with you, and it's been a lot of fun. And oh, by the way, yeah, I noticed um, in one of the playbacks, seasoned oven mitts, they work better. I think, anyway, the only exception to seasoned mitts that I have is Mr. Claw. He is pretty much in pristine condition. 
So we wish you happy holidays, a happy new year, and we will see you again next time.